well we're back for another Argo episode or not really an episode just a small clip now <clears throat> there's a bunch of things I need to explain before we go do that number one multiple sclerosis is kicking my ass so I'm a little bit behind the eight ball you'll have to bear with me the number two is last time I went out um, a situation occurred that required me to invent these little guards namely I got my finger stuck in this piece now there's a whole episode that explains that um, I'm sure I'll try and put the link below if I get round to it I often don't now um, in the previous episode I installed a fish finder in here there is a little transducer hiding down there um, underneath the hitch and that will be handy However, I only got about a minute and a half to test it before I found myself in excruciating pain. And uh, full credit to my uh, lovely little apprentice, who not only assisted me in driving this out of the water, she also managed to shut everything down, put the handbrake on, and administered first aid, which has meant she did such a good job that it's meant that I don't need stitches and I'm going to maintain most of the mobility in my finger. It was a, a close call. But anyway... Um, our first order of duty however is we need to hitch this thing up and uh, I need breakfast I haven't had food yet it's a Saturday morning and uh, I slept in which is a rarity for me even with all the problems I have with multiple sclerosis there are a lot of life demands that keep a lot of my limited time and energy uh, consumed um, I haven't put nearly as much energy into the uh, military museum as I should be and uh, I'm an office bearer again down there, so I've got quite a bit to keep up with, as well as all the other adulting things. And I noticed with my tarp, there's something under there I forgot about, so I'm going to probably pull the tarp off and check all that stuff out too. Anyway, um, I think what I'm going to do here, I'm going to open the back of this, and uh, I'm going to turn the kettle on, and uh, I'm going to uh, take myself for... A drive to location and um, probably have breakfast on location and uh, we'll see how all this fish finder works anyway see you in a little bit I uh, made a bit of a stop on the way, stopped in to see Tinkerman Mick and discuss video editing and management and stuff as uh, he is actually my uh, YouTube channel manager. So he's uh, responsible for some of the reasons why you see text on my thumbnails and stuff and different camera angles. Originally I just wanted to make record of stuff. Well, I started this channel, but, uh, hold on a minute, yeah, but, uh, he's convinced me to add a little bit of flair to it. So, uh, here's that turbo. Right, we'll go get this in the water in a moment, and, uh, I'll stop the act. Alrighty, so we're nearly here. Here. Now, one thing Ticking Man Mick told me is that he's been in this location, this kayak, it's got a more expensive depth sounder on it. And, uh, well, mostly the, the common perception in this area is it's only about four meters deep for most of it. But he said actually, a couple of spots is nine meters and more deep, which is pretty. 
pretty crazy actually. Um, so yeah, I'll be surprised to, uh, to actually verify that, but he apparently he's mapped this whole area. So uh, let's find ourselves a spot to pull up and uh, yeah, we'll go and uh, get ourselves in the water. Uh, my usual spot's taken, that's annoying. Alright, well I'm going to park over here then. Kirk. There we go. Let's turn the fish finder on when we're in the water. Let's get ourselves in the water. This way while you get out. The quick on the deck, they say. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Dave. Alright, 
right, what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to drive down to the spot where Tinker Man Mick um, suggested it was really deep, and we're going to try that area. All right, so we're over in the corner that he thinks is really deep, and uh, I'm only registering about three meters, between two and a half to three meters. I'm just idling through, we're getting into the weeds and stuff now. Yeah, see it's instantly jumped to half a meter. That's just weeds. That's gonna be hard to check it unless I clear something out with the uh, wheels a bit. Yeah, it's about two and a half. later. So we made our way back to base. Um, I had a call from a mate. I needed to go and fix something for him in a hurry. So uh, yeah, I hightailed it back and I didn't get much time to film. But anyway, we are back. And the Argo is back with us. And the depth sounder worked very, very well. Now, I'm not sure what I said at the start of the video. I will check in editing. But I believe there's going to be some links below. Um, one of which... Uh, should be the link to the install video of this um, Also the video where I managed to like destroy my finger as well or at least attempt to do so um, So yeah That being said Again as I showed before I have trigger guards or finger guards which pretty much stopped me from getting my fingers in there the other thing um I gave a bloke a lift to one of his boats because the water was up a bit higher than usual and um, yeah so that meant that I was sitting in the front while he sat in the back for balance and I discovered that while I have the battery in the jerry can holder it sits nice and level so instead of running the trolling motor I trundled around on the wheels all the time um, which generates a lot more turbulence in the water so the barter or the graph on the um, Lawrence fish finder was actually a little bit uh, a little bit wrinkly it did level out a bit once I actually um, uh, put the brakes on the wheels and let the engine idle so 
Overall, I'm actually quite impressed with it. Uh, it's given some reliable depth measures, even in the weedy bits, um, as I sort of scooted past. I would still get reliable depth in between the weeds, um, which is not too bad. That being said, I've got lots of weeds wrapped around all the drive shafts in this because I went through all the stuff that I wouldn't normally do it. Uh, so I'll be cutting weeds off it probably tomorrow sometime. Um, and greasing all the bearings and stuff. But anyway, um, this was supposed to be a quick video, so I'm going to leave it here. Um, because there's a couple of people who have actually asked me about this. Uh, one of them, by the name of Rocco, has been really sweating on me to do this. So he can decide whether he wants to buy one of these for himself too. Uh, but there are a few other people, uh, both on and offline, that have asked what this is like. Because it's basically the, the base model Lawrence Fishfinder. So, uh, yeah. I have read that you can mount these inboard if you've got the right kind of gel or a little tube of water or something. Uh, my buddy Tinkerman Mick, he mounted his in the hull of his kayak with a, a special gel for doing that too. So it's a possibility I might do that in the future to avoid uh, possibly uh, wiping it out when I'm on land. But um, anyway, hope it was fun. I'll see you in the next video. And um, I am working to try and get some content out for you guys, but uh, MS is whipping my ass. So uh, I have had to slow down a little bit and of course the profits from the channel drop off. But I'm not here for the money, I'm here for the videos. So, see you later, hope it was a fun one and we'll find something more interesting to do very soon.